Hey guys, it's Neil again from Heart of Texas Armory, and today I want to bring you guys a video talking about upgrading your old capacitor in a kinetic watch from Seiko to the new lithium ion battery. Now this watch here I picked up about two weeks ago, I guess, and the issue with this watch here is like a lot of these old kinetic watches, they just don't hold their charge. So the old capacitors that Seiko provided with these watches, so this movement here is a 5M43. With a new capacitor, you could get up to two to three weeks of power reserve. Now, when you upgrade to the new lithium ion battery, you can get up to four or six months of power reserve, so a huge upgrade. And it's not hard to do this, guys. So these lithium ion batteries are available. You can get them at Amazon, eBay, and you can get up to 10, maybe even 15 years of service out of these batteries. So it's well worth the upgrade. You can see this is the one I'm going with for my watch. Just make sure you order the right one for your movement. It has everything in the kit here. So you got the plate, the insulator, of course, the new lithium ion battery. So this is a very simple process and it's just a few tools you'll need. Of course, you'll need a case back opener, a small set of precision screwdrivers, and I'm also going to use a toothpick. I like using these because they're a little more delicate than say, like a metal pick or something like that. These work great on these movements. So that's about it. So what we'll do here is go ahead and remove the case back and start the upgrade. Okay, so I did break the case back open off camera, but I wanted to bring you guys in a little closer so I can show you some details on this case back. You can see it still has the sticker on in immaculate condition here. Saflex crystal, which is really cool. And make sure you check the movement here so you can see mine is engraved 5M43. Just get the right battery for your kinetic movement. So we'll go ahead and start removing the case back here. And I did off camera, like I mentioned, use my case back opener here to loosen it. So we'll be able to just use our hand here to unthread it off the case back. Just be careful when you go through this process. You don't want to scratch your case or case back if you can manage it with your tool or damage your gasket. So just take your time when you do this process. And there is some engraving on the inside of this case back. So I'll just show you that here. Kind of interesting. But now that we have the case back off, we can take a look at this movement here. Again, this is a Seiko Kinetic Movement, a 5M43. Let me rotate the rotor out of the way and we'll show you the capacitor right there. That is what we're going to be replacing with the lithium ion battery. So next up, we're going to change the camera angle and start that procedure. So we're going to need to remove a total of three screws, one here on the rotor, and the other two are on this plate here, so one right there, and the other very small screw is on the opposite side right there. Now, I do recommend you guys pick up a precision uh, screwdriver for this project. The size that I'm using is a 0.9 millimeter flathead. You could probably use a one millimeter as well, but I do recommend the smaller 0.9 millimeter. So let me go ahead and remove the gasket here off of the case. You can leave yours in place if you want, but I'm gonna remove mine. So now we're ready to remove this screw holding the rotor on here in the center. So this pro process, you need to be very careful. You obviously don't wanna strip these screws out. So be very steady when you remove these things. Just take your time, carefully unthread that screw. It should come off pretty easily. So once we get that screw unthreaded here, we need to carefully lift that up and set it aside somewhere safe where we don't lose it. Let me show you how small that screw is and how fine the threads are. So extremely small here. So again, guys, just be very careful. Set it somewhere safe. Now that we've got the screw off, we can lift the rotor off the movement here. So pretty simple process. Just use the little toothpick and lift right up. It should pop off as well pretty easily. And just like with the screw, set that aside somewhere safe where you're not going to get it dirty or lose it and we can now lift this little transfer gear. So same process, it should lift right off, just like the rotor. So lift that up off the movement here and set it aside as well. Let me show you what that gear looks like here. So I'll bring that up so you can see how small and how fine the teeth are on that gear. So just be careful. These small parts, guys, you can lose them really easily, but just be careful and set them aside. So now that we've got the rotor out of the way, we can remove these two screws here holding the plate that holds the capacitor in place. 
So the same two steps here for the plate screws. So go ahead and just carefully and steadily remove these two screws. Maybe lay off the coffee if you're gonna try this procedure. And I'm gonna go ahead and speed the film up here so we don't just watch me just unscrewing these two screws. So let me do that now. And we'll jump back into normal speed here. And next up, now that we got those two screws out of the way, we can lift this little plate off. You can see it just pops out of place. Keep track of the orientation of these parts so the replacement parts will go back in the same way, obviously. Next, we need to remove this insulator and take extra care with this insulator as it's very delicate, very thin. You can easily break or fold this little insulator. The kit does come with a replacement, so if you do damage it, you can use the one in the kit. Set those items aside in a safe location. And now we can actually take out the old capacitor. So use your pick here, the toothpick, to pop it free. It should just lift right out of the movement. And once we get the capacitor out, we can go ahead and start the upgrade of the new lithium ion battery. And the new lithium ion battery will go in just like you took the old capacitor out. So in the same orientation, drop it in just like that and push it into place. Just be careful to make sure the contacts go into the correct spot. So that is installed correctly. And now we can install the insulator back into position. So make sure you don't forget the insulator. You do need that installed, of course. There are two little alignment pegs here that will help you get this installed in the correct location. So you can see I'm playing around with it here, trying to get it to sit properly. So there are two holes in the actual insulator that will line up with these pegs. So just take care and make sure you install this correctly. It takes a little bit of work to get it to seat properly, but once you get it, it should stay in place. Just be careful once you get it set like this, you don't wanna cough or sneeze, anything like that, because a little bit of wind can have that thing go flying across the room. So those two pegs right there are the whole key to this. Next up, we're going to install the plate back to position. So just like with the insulator, there are two holes here to help orient this thing properly. Those two holes will line up with the two pegs in the movement. So carefully set that down. You don't wanna disturb that insulator, otherwise you're gonna have a frustrating time with this. But the whole key with this whole deal with this is to make sure you get the two holes there on the plate to align with the two pegs in the movement. Once you do that, it'll drop into place. So just play around with it. You'll see once it sits just like I did right there, the plate will slip over those pegs. And once you do that, hold it in position and go ahead and get your two screws. You can use like a pair of tweezers to help drop this these screws into position. I used a piece of small folded paper here to help drop them in. Uh, you want to be very careful with this because you can lose those screws. Now that I've got one in position here, I'm going to go ahead and speed the film up and fast forward through the actual screwing process here of the two plate screws. We'll come back into standard speed here in just a second. So once we get these screws installed, now we can move toward this gear. I wanted to show you guys this gear up close because it is not flat. You can see there is a hump in this gear the actual hump is going to face up. So make sure you have that oriented properly when you install this. So take care to take note of that. Drop the gear into position and it will slip over the shaft here. You may have to rotate it around because the shaft has a square shape that will align with the cutout in the gear. You can see it dropped in position right there. Now the rotor goes right on top of the gear. Same thing. There is a square cutout in that rotor, so once it's aligned properly, it'll just drop right over that shaft. And now we're ready to install the screw that holds the rotor into position. So we'll drop the screw right into its proper slot there and go ahead and thread this in. I'll speed the film up here and make sure you do tighten this properly. You don't want that screw backing out with normal use. Once you tighten it, just verify that the rotor is working like you see mine right here. Once you do that, you're pretty much done. All that's left now is to install the waterproofing gasket. And I went ahead and lubed mine up. You can use like a 100% silicone grease for that. Make sure you get it in the right position. And then once you have it in the right position, you can go ahead and screw in the case back. So this of course is the final step here. So just thread on your case back and then use your case back opener to tighten it to the proper spec. 
And once we get this hand tightened on here, we'll go ahead and flip the watch over to verify that the movement is actually working now. And we can tell that the seconds hand is ticking, so everything looks to be working properly. So here it is. I've got the watch finished up here. I've got the time set to the correct time. Everything is working beautifully with its new lithium ion battery. These batteries, you can expect to get 10 to maybe 15 years of life out of it. And this is a really awesome upgrade for your kinetic watch. So guys, if you have a kinetic watch that doesn't hold its charge, look into upgrading to the lithium ion batteries. It's definitely worth it in my opinion. So this watch here is back in action, ready to go for another 10 or 15 years. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below.